Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to look in the Edit Mesh menu at the command called Add Divisions. I'm just going to create a plane. I'll scale it up bigger. I'll get rid of my grid. And I'm just going to remove the divisions that it currently has by going over here to the channel box, clicking under Inputs on the Polyplane 1. This gets us to the Creation Node items that we can adjust how this plane looks when we create it. I'll grab both subdivisions width and height, then click and drag in my scene, take it all down to one. So now we just have one big square. So now I can go back to Edit Mesh, Add Divisions. And let's go into the options and we can see how this command actually works. We can just see it on the plane. So first of all, I'm going to Edit, Reset Settings, just to make sure I have the very default settings. And we see here first we have two different methods of adding divisions. One is called Exponentially. The other is linearly, okay? And then we have exponential controls with a division level slider and a mode for quads or triangles. Below that, we have linear controls that are grayed out. And so depending on which one of these add division methods that we have active, those are the controls that are going to be available. So you can see the difference here. We have for linear, for example, since it's active, we have divisions in U and divisions in V. And this is referring to UV. And if you're familiar at all with texturing processes and so on, what Maya refers to for texture coordinates or in any, really any two-dimensional coordinates are U and V as opposed to X and Y or something like that. So just imagine that the letter U represents X, the X direction, while the letter V represents Y. So U is left to right and V is up and down. And the, again, the reason why they call them UVs versus you know, like XYs or something like that is simply because with 3D space, we already have established, we have X, Y, and Z uh, with height and depth. And so when it comes to 2D coordinates, as opposed to using X and Y again for width and height, they went three letters back in the alphabet. So if you look at the alphabet, it goes uh, UV, W, X, Y, Z. Or at the end of the alphabet. So X, Y, Z is what we use traditionally for three dimensions. And so for two texture coordinates, they went back to U, V, W. And there is such a thing as a 3D texture. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's where the W comes in. Okay, But 99% of the time, we're only dealing with X and Y coordinates for textures and other 2D things. So it's referred to as UVs. So when it's talking about dividing this plane, and divisions in U versus divisions in V, it means divisions width-wise or height-wise, okay? So that's what it's referring to linearly. Exponentially, we don't get that separation. We just have division levels, and we have a slider, just like these sliders here. So it's dividing in all directions, essentially exponentially, and then whether it's quads or triangles. So let's just, let's just use exponential here for a second, and since that's the default, division level one, and I'm going to go ahead and go to display, heads up display, and turn on my poly count display up here in the top left corner. Hopefully it's easy enough to see that. It might be easier to see the numbers that show up. Currently this plane, for example, has one face, four edges, four vertices, you know, like in all four corners, four UVs, and so on. So you can see here, these are the numbers for our default plane that we see here. So I'm going to add divisions with this command here, add divisions to face options, settings, add divisions exponentially, division level one, quads, hit, boom, add divisions. So you can see it there, bam, bam, it cuts it in twice, both directions. We see here it cuts it into four faces and so on. And we here I have this little box I can add additional divisions. And you can see this is what it refers to as exponential. By adding four divisions, it's really going really quite high with our face count. It's not just four faces. Now I have 256 faces. So that's where we're referring to exponential growth. It's just compounding that division. So again, one, we have four. We've got a division is two. Suddenly we have 16, okay? So four times four. Go to division is three. We have 64, okay? 16 times 16. Then 64 times 64, you guessed it, is 256. Now, if I just slide this back and forth, divisions four is as far as it goes, but I can 
click here and type say five for example and now we have up to 1024 faces and so on so it's just exponentially growing uh, from that initial four just compounding it over and over again now I'm going to undo these things let's take the visions down to zero go to object mode and just delete history just to remove all that stuff okay so that was with the face I had I had the object selected and so we'll go back again to edit mesh add divisions options it says add divisions to face options now if I right click and choose edges You'll see here our add divisions to edge options is now what we see. And we haven't gone to the linear on the faces yet. I understand that. But it's kind of kind of showing you how this changes depending on what component type I have active. So with add divisions to edge options active, we have division levels again. Then we have minimum length and world space. We have other options. Right click and hold and choose vertex. Again, it doesn't really add to vertices. Vertices is excluded from the add divisions because you can't really divide a vertex you know mathematically you can chamfer it which is another command altogether <laughs> so this only works for edges and faces so let's go back to faces then I just want to show you that and so that was exponential mode was quads now if I go to triangles and make sure I'm in object mode or face mode you see here it adds in divisions with triangles and you see you get a much different result using triangles. And this is one I would call not necessarily as useful. I would say this uh, type of look, while it kind of looks pretty, almost like a snowflake, it's not necessarily useful for modeling. Typically with modeling objects, you want to try to stay within quads. So I imagine you probably would want to not use the triangle option most of the time. Edit mesh, add divisions, options. Okay, so I'm going to keep this on quads just because it's cleaner, it's more useful for modeling. And here you have the division levels. Again, it goes up to four by default, but you can type in higher than that. Now, linearly, we this all grays out now, and now we have divisions U and V. And hit Add Divisions. And then nothing really seems to happen. I can click up here in divisions, left and right, from zero to four, and nothing really seems to change. So what we have to do with this, if I go over here to the channel box on the right side, you'll see here under inputs, poly, sub, deface, we have divisions U, divisions V, and divisions is total. Now again, this divisions total is the slider that we saw for the exponential method, not the linear method. So this divisions slider, this number, doesn't really do anything. However, divisions U, I can now slide, and you can see here I can divide one direction that uh, X or width direction up to eight by default and then v same idea so i could say have two going in the x axis or the width of the plane and eight in the height of the plane for example so you can get instead of it being equally you know four times four 16 times 16 so on we can get a odd, kind of an odd number of edges going one way versus the other so you can get a more custom look with this linear uh, division option. So I just wanted to show you that difference. The channel box, using the channel box here is a little bit uh, in, unintuitive just simply because you, you don't know that this division slider is not active because you're using the linear method, for example. Now over here, you can change this method right here under sub D method. Click this and I can go back to exponential. And now these divisions U and V, they don't do anything because now I'm using exponential, which is the divisions like this. So depending on which method you're using is which of these division sliders will work. U and V for linear, the one that's just divisions by itself for exponential. Go into the attributes. Go back into object mode and click on this. We should see here, go through this. There you go, poly sub deface here. We have the same kind of idea. Subdivision method, we can choose exponential or linear. Subdivision levels, mode, quads or triangles, and then again, divisions U and V is grayed out unless I choose the linear one. So we have the same settings depending on where you go, whether it be at the tool option or the command options in the channel box under inputs or going to the attribute editor. There's lots of ways to get to these different sliders and controls. Now that was all faces, dividing faces. Let's go into dividing edges. I'm going to delete history on this plane since it's currently at its default kind of state here. Back to my channel box transformations and all that kind of good stuff so again back to just one face in my poly count display 
Now I'm going to go into edge mode. I'll just select, say, one edge just for the sake of example. And then I'll go to edit mesh, add divisions options. And you see here, add divisions to edge options. Now we've seen some of these uh, options now, division levels. We kind of understand the point of that. It's kind of how many divisions we're going to have, right? So division levels one, minimum length zero, and then we have this world space checkbox on and off. So let's just keep it default, edit, reset settings, all default settings, add divisions. Now we may not be able to see the divisions necessarily, but we can see here the numbers change. So now this says five. If I increase the divisions up to three, for example, now it says seven up here for how many edges this plane has. Now it has eight. And the, probably the easiest way to see if I right click and go to vertex mode, you can see the little purple dots indicating those vertices between edges. So that edge on this side has been divided four times. One, two, three, four. Giving us one, two, three, four, five edges across this side. Okay, so we've divided that edge multiple times. Relatively straightforward. If I take the divisions back down to zero, and then those divisions are all gone, we're back to one single edge. So let's look at this again. Gonna have to make sure I'm in edge component mode, otherwise, it's going to default to face. So right click and choose edge. So the minimum length slider, minimum is zero, maximum, it can be higher than this. You have minimum length of 10 or something. Now, depending on the size of your uh, plane that you're messing with, this might give you different results. So let's just say, for example, I go all the way up to 10, okay? And let's say division level two, and I'll say add divisions. It's gonna give me an error, see there? It says here, found no items list. Oh, first of all, I have to select an edge. That's why it gave me an error. <laughs> add divisions, there it goes. So if I look at my vertices now, I got this one there in the center. Now if I increase my divisions, you'll see here my edge count is not going up. If I go up to one, I get edge is five. I've divided this edge into two. If we go to two though, it's still five. Three, it's still five. Four, it's still five, and so on. Because the minimum length I don't have enough length to give us another edge to divide. Okay, so that this is how you can kind of limit how many edges you get based on the length of them, if that's something that's important to you. So for example, if I were to make this plane maybe much larger, that really big, freeze transformations, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete history. So now I'll grab this edge again edit mesh, add divisions, options, and we have minimum length now all the way up to 10, and hit add divisions. Okay, so now I have six edges. I go up to divisions of three, I have seven now, four, I have eight, so it is dividing it now like we thought it should earlier, so you can see here, I can mouse over this, and I can see those vertices from the divisions. Because I made the plane physically larger, that minimum length is able to be given to each division that it's been given based on the commands I give it. So that minimum length is based on, again, how long each edge would be when divided. It has to be a minimum length before it will divide. Hopefully that makes sense. Take this back down to zero, and then I'll delete history. And let's try another option here, edit mesh, add divisions, options. So we had this world space. So there's world space and there's also object space. So what is world space? So the opposite of world space is local space or object space. Um, to demonstrate this perhaps, if we can just close this for now, I'll make a little cube. Okay, just looking at the cube, I'm gonna hot, I'm gonna, I'll delete the, the plane for now. Don't need it right now. Okay, so world space versus object space, just a short mini lesson here. So the object space is the, is the space on the object itself versus world space being the space regarding the entire world of the scene. So if I were to rotate this cube, for example, and then press W for the movement tool, notice that the Y height handle or up and down the, that green handle there is angled with the cube. So my handle, the world, the translate handle is oriented with 
the object. It's within object space. So I can move it in the y-axis up and down based on the objects up. The objects idea of up is this top side of the cube. However, the world's idea of up is straight up and down, like in a diagonal direction here. So if I were to double click on my move tool and get to my move tool settings here, I can say axis orientation, okay? And the first setting here is object. It's, it's set to the object's local space. I can change this instead of object space, I can say world space. And now look at what's up now. Up is now going straight up based on the world space. Uh, the world's idea of up, okay, is this way. So I can click on this and move it up exactly based on the world's idea of what up is, not on the, what the object's idea of up is, which is this way. So that's world space versus local space, or world space versus object space, that kind of thing. Okay, a little bit, hopefully, hopefully not too confusing. But, bring back a plane here. Take away the divisions. Okay. So, we talked before about the minimum length of these edges that are divided, right? So what this world space means is, if we go back to Edit Mesh, Add Divisions, Options, and go to, oh, make sure I'm in Edge Component Mode, there we go, World Space. So it's saying, all right, so the minimum length is 10. If I have this slider all the way up like this, 10 uh, units wide, uh, 10 units long of an edge. But is that based on the world space, what the world believes is 10 units wide, or what the object space is? So it's just separating that. So if I put this to 10, or let's say, let's make this, uh, let's make it uh, 2. So 2 units long, and bring back the grid, that's useful. So this grid is what I'm referring to when I refer to the units. So the edge has to be 2 units long before it will divide. That's the minimum length of the division, okay? So when I say, select an edge and say add divisions, okay, it didn't do it. Because it's not wide long enough. So I'm going to scale this up. So now, let's say here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight divisions wide plane here. Go back to my edge, edit mesh, add divisions, options. Okay, so now we can say apply with a minimum length of two. It didn't do it. See that? It didn't do it because it's according to the plane, its thought is that I'm still that small. You look at my scale over here for the plane. I've scaled it up eight, you know, eight scale. So even though the plane is larger, okay, it's not dividing because it still doesn't, it's using its own local space. It still thinks it's as small as it was. Now if I go back and try this again, now I'll say, all right, we're going to use the world space. So what the world believes is two units long, that's what you're going to cut on. Add divisions. And now I get some cuts here. Okay, so that's kind of the wibbly wobbly way of showing what that means. Based on, are we talking talk about the world's scale or the uh, object's scale? If you have any questions or thoughts on the add divisions command under the edit mesh menu, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them, answer any questions you might have. And again, thank you guys so much for watching.